Johnson Show. I'm Josh Johnson, joined by my co-host, fellow stand comedian Logan Nielsen. Logan, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing all right, man. How are you? I'm doing okay. I, hmm, I like. So we were in Arizona. Couldn't tell if that was a long Zoom lag or <laughs> you had to really think if you were okay. No, I, I'm fine. I'm. It's all fine. Uh, we were in Arizona doing some shows. And yes, we were. I, I get back to New York, and I'm just so thankful to be back. I was I was in L.A. for two weeks, which was a little too long. Like, it was yeah. just long It's enough. a long time to, to be away from where you live. Yeah, yeah. It was just long enough that I started to really miss, you know, home and my bed and all the stuff yeah. like that. Um, I, okay... I feel like there's a there's a level when it comes to travel at least. Mm-hmm. There needs to be some shared language now with like what's actually bad and what's not. Do you understand what I mean? Like I've taken so buses, you, you I've have taken me planes, with the... I've taken trains. Right. Right, yeah. But just the chaos we're living in because people don't have like a shared understanding of what's gross and what's not and like what's okay. I I think it goes I think it even goes deeper than that because not only do people not share that language but I haven't had a a single airport handle security the same way anymore. It's like there's no there's no shared language even on like the basic rules anymore. Let mm-hmm. alone the unspoken social mores. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I think I think it goes even deeper because we don't even we don't even have a foundation. <laughs> there's not even there's not even a ground floor for us to build upon. We're not even a country anymore. Okay. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I was. I but it's not just us. It's like the the world is so connected now too. But we we don't have a rule. Yeah. Can you take your shoes off on a plane? <laughs> there was a Is guy awful? on a train that I had to tell myself that this man was deranged just so that I could live with the life I was I was I was currently living with him in it because <laughs> this man had his so- his shoes and his socks off getting like fully comfortable on the seat across yeah. because it was one of those Amtrak trains where you know how there's your two seats but then there's two seats facing you yeah 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 he had his feet up on the other seats chilling like he was at home mm yeah and I I I wasn't even about to sit there but the fact that loose feet were just out <laughs> I couldn't stand it and and you know what's crazy? Loose feet running around all willy nilly. What's crazy? What makes me crazy? I understand this makes me crazy. If this man had walked on with sandals, and he did that, I still wouldn't be happy about <laughs> it. But the fact that there's been shoe heat and sock heat that's now yeah. been been pressed up on this foot, and who knows if this is an athlete's foot or not, and now you're putting <laughs> the foot in the seat. No. That's true. That's true. Because that's 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 a different foot than a flip flop foot. Mm-hmm. That's diff- that's different types of 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 stank. <laughs> you know, there's a lot more process to getting comfortable. It's it's also the boldness of it. Because shoes and socks that takes more comfort. Yeah. Was that? <laughs> that was okay. So I am coming to you from my office. Uh, I'll yeah. I'll let the oh, listeners okay. know so that they don't think that I'm in a detention center. So basically <laughs> I'm in my office. So there's going to be a lot of white wall. There's going to be some desk. Big yawn. There's maybe going to be a little bit of a, uh, of small TV action in the background uh, for the people who watch the full clips on YouTube. But there's also going to be some announcements every now and again, you're going to hear a muffled announcement. Like we're on the train. Oh, okay. That's what the. For a second, I thought you just had something playing on your phone, but you were staring dead at me. I'm like, this is some sort of. Yeah. 
I wish I had. This the... is a move. I'm like, why is he? I'm like, why is he trying to fuck with me while? I'm... Yeah, I I almost wish I was the level of unhinged to be looking right at you, and to also yeah. be like playing something. Just just playing some sort of YouTube clip and just staring at me. Yeah, like what looking at you and not paying some... attention. Yeah, that is that is attentively telling someone you don't care. Mm-hmm. They, it's almost counterintuitive, but it also makes it more insulting. Yeah, that you're really taking you're really taking the time to look at me and go, I don't care what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that's like the mobsters in movies where you're like, oh, that's the truly insane person is doing something like that. That's somebody with hate in their heart. Yeah, that just yeah. truly does not register that you're a human to your face. Yeah. Um. So, I wanted to ask you today. Yeah. Um, sure. It is okay. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to word the question. Have you seen? It's a very pensive episode. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen or noticed a time where there was just some <laughs> like wild comeuppance in the moment? I know we've talked about that concert, like the guy at the mosh pit that you went to. Oh yeah, yeah. You know yeah what I mean, yeah. but I'm wondering if since we've had that conversation, because that was over a year ago, I'm wondering if there have been any sure. more times that you've seen like immediate and swift comeuppance in real time uh i guess not not really i mean no i uh i mean seen someone like crash their car (laughs) 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 it was like yeah you should have been looking (laughs) that's technically that's immediate comeuppance yeah yeah you're not wrong that's, I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, that's wild. <laughs> that's very wild. Um, I <laughs> people who get bit by dogs. I mean, there's plenty of cause and effect. In there. Yeah, I, ju- I just mean like if there's no, anything. No, I'm, ki- I'm seen, kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, no, it was that was such a specific question. There's no way I was going to think of an example. I don't think it stories the way you do. I don't have that like Rolodex. <laughs> no, fair enough. But I'm also I gotta, just sitting I gotta there take a with second. Them. No, I know, but I gotta like comb through old boxes. <laughs> Sometimes you're like, "Hey, Josh, have you ever had an apple?" And I'm like, "Man, this one time, this guy tried to stab me." Oh yeah, no, you do that shit to me all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I remember um, there was this one time where <laughs> this this kid. I don't even know why I didn't like this kid. Um, But I was like, had to be, it was in the summer, had to be in the eighth grade or the ninth grade or something. And there was this kid who I had to swim with because I was like, I was like, uh, I was learning to swim. I was in the beginner class, but there was like an advanced beginner that I should have been doing in this swim lesson. But because I didn't say anything, have I told you about this before? Because I didn't say I anything, I was just chuckling at, they thought, I was chuckling at advanced beginner. Oh, like that's well, no, literally, this is full ass oxymoron. This is what happened. This is like this is what's so annoying. Yeah. So there was just swimming lessons that my mom took me to, mm-hmm. and I had had some swimming lessons years ago, but hadn't been in a pool since. And so right. I was a beginner still in my mind because I was like, hey, if I'm still this nervous to get in the water. I'm not an advanced swimmer, you know? And mm-hmm. so so then I get in the water, and at first the teacher's, like, going over the rules in the pool and everything, just, like, watch out for each other, don't kick each other, like, no, you know, dunking each other, you know, like, just just every everyone was getting this lesson. Then she was like, okay, um, the kids who can swim this much come with me, the kids who, like, can't swim at all go over there. And so, in my mind, I'm a kid who can't swim at all, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, I go over to the other direction, and then when I um, <laughs> when I get over there, it's just a bunch of tiny kids. So, it's me, this, like, 14-year-old, mm-hmm. and then all of these, like, itty-bitty babies getting now, swim lessons. Now, be honest, though, how much bigger, how much bigger were you than, than them, really? They were, like, four. Oh, okay. they were like four and five, and I'm like fourteen. 
Right. And so the lesson starts and they're like, we're just going to blow bubbles under the water. And in my head, I'm like, I've, I've done all this. Like, what is this? This doesn't make any sense. And the other kids were like doing like half laps on the other side of the pool. But we're like going under the water just a little bit and blowing bubbles. And like mm-hmm. it was it, it felt like I was in a Lamaze class and I was the baby. Like it was just it was so embarrassing and I didn't have the wherewithal to quit the lesson or to leave uh-huh. the teacher because the teacher is just sure. the teacher's acting like I need to be over there. And then we do the whole lesson. And then there's this one kid who I guess is just I'm definitely the odd kid out. I'm the only one over here as old as I am. And uh, <laughs> this one kid who shouldn't be over here either because he's like five or so, but he's like swimming right. in place. And so I'm like, who's going to get this kid? This is insane, right? Like, this is like, this kid's like a little mermaid. And, and then he looks at me as I'm, like, doing whatever little kick exercise we're supposed to be doing. Because you know how they have you, when you're getting a swim lesson, they'll also have you grab the edge of the pool and do some kicks and stuff, mm-hmm. like, to yeah. learn how to push yourself and everything. And I'm pushing, and this other kid next to me, the little, like, five-year-old kid, is also pushing. And... He just looks at me and he goes, so what's wrong with you? <laughs> and from that, from that moment, I was like, okay, I have an enemy. Like, I have a, I have a mortal enemy. I don't want anything yeah. good for this kid. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to be an advanced murderer. Because uh, I, I was like, wow. what? And then he repeated it. <laughs> he was like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with and you? I was like, so what's wrong with you? I was you? like, what? And he, I'm like, what do you mean? And this is as I'm kicking. And, and he's like, you're like a, you're like a grown-up kid. And I'm, I'm kicking next to him. I'm like, there's no grown-up kid. That, like, the... If you're a kid, you're a kid. Hey, now if they're going to be advanced beginners, I think they're going to be grown up kids. Yeah, yeah, right. And and so Sorry, I'm just having fun with all the oxymorons today. So then he's like, uh, "Why aren't you over there?" And I was like, "Because I can't swim like they can." <laughs> like, like this little kid doesn't understand the concept of like, I just don't know as much as they know. <laughs> I know more yeah. than the class. Like, I should have been in middle beginner because they, yeah. it, the whole, okay, the marquee, like, the thing that you buy when you go to this swim lesson says beginner. Right. So, For sure. already For sure. them breaking up the class was kind of wild, you know? So, yeah. then yeah. I'm going to what I think is a beginner class. Now, they didn't fully explain right. what that meant, but I, I, I projected my own stuff onto it because in my head, I was like, okay, they're going to take the little bit that I know how to swim and make me able to fully swim. And I won't be able to swim in sure, deep water, sure. but I'll ha- I'll be able to swim the length of the pool without needing to put my yeah. foot down to get air. And, you know what I mean? Like, that thing. Yeah. The, the, the basic goal of all swimming lessons is to get good enough to just not drown should yeah. you find yourself in water. Yeah. No matter what, that's that's the that's the, you know, the base level. Is I just if I if I find myself in water, I want to be able to not die. Yeah. I'm good with that. <laughs> and so then I'm I'm like kicking next to this kid and this kid is talking to me and he clearly gets bored while he's asking me all these questions. So he stops grabbing, he stops grabbing mm. the uh, uh the, the edge of the pool and mm-hmm. just lets it go, flips over and is now on his back sort of like kicking up. Like so he's just floating on his back and still moving his legs a little bit. But he's just sort of okay. like moving in place. And I'm watching. I'm like, why are you over here? Moving in place. Like this dude is like, he's like swimming like he was born in the water. <laughs> maybe he was. Maybe he was a water birth. Maybe it was a water birth. They, and maybe, so, they, maybe they come out with, with a little extra skill. And so then... I, I like I ask the kid because I get a little add to it with the kid because he just keeps asking me why I'm over there. You're like a grown up kid, blah blah blah. I was like, hey, there's no grown up kids, it's just kid. And then I finally I was like, why aren't you over there? And then he go, this kid goes, 
oh, I don't know. And then he goes under the water and goes and swims over with the bigger kid. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you you reminded him that he was a great swimmer. Yeah. He, in the moment, was like, oh, you're right. I'm very good at this. Wee! Here I go. He shoots out of the water like a dolphin. And he went, he didn't go under the water like, um, oh, let me get my bearings and then go swim. This kid went right, backwards right, right. like he was in a swim competition. Like he just, yeah. he just doubled over in the water and flipped and then started swimming <laughs> like he was a dolphin. I hated this kid so much. And so then, um, the, the lesson ends. And I remember, I can't remember my mom took me there or my aunt took me there. But whoever took me there, yeah. I I get out of the pool and I'm like, why did they, like, why did they have me with the the little kids? Like, I knew I had to swim more than that. And then she was like, I don't know. I was waiting for you to say something. Like, because they stayed for the <laughs> lesson. So oh, I can't remember okay. who it was, but they saw the whole thing. It was either my mom or my aunt that took me. But this is like so long ago, I don't remember. But she was like, yeah, I was waiting for you to say something. I was like. When's he going to get tired of this? <laughs> and then, okay, so then where the pool was, was a, like a snow cone cart. So okay. there's there's a snow cone cart off a little bit ways at that, um, like near that pool. You still have to walk to it. Okay. And that kid, mm-hmm. that, that uh, five-year-old, he, <sighs> I'm leaving the pool. And he's already swam and then run over and got a snow cone and come back. And uh, he said something like snide to me. I can't remember what it was. Uh, and it was like, it was like, it was so mean that it didn't seem like he was five. It seemed like only an older kid could have <laughs> thought of something so mean. But he was. You got bullied by a kid 10 years younger than you. But it, how, it's not, it's not bullying because I was not <laughs> like. You kind of sort of got bullied what by you, a five-year-old in this story. Just because he was being mean to me doesn't mean I was bullied. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> by that logic, oh, I've been bullied goodness. by a lot of babies. All right? I've, I've picked up a baby before and just immediately started crying, which didn't feel nice. Crying? What would you say? I thought I said crying. What did I say? <laughs> I think you said crying. That's oh. what it sounded like to me. Oh, my bad. <laughs> no, it's Okay. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, but he he like he made funny the, like the so what's wrong with you, and then he got you again at the snow cone cart. Yeah, so and you seem still not happy about it. So to me, that's what makes it uh, you know, puts it in the realm nah. of of getting bullied. Nah, nah. Um, I I bet he's huge now too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so I I'm walking away. And a kid said something about like, uh, uh, what was it? It was like it was like really messed up. It was to the point where I was like, "Oh, you're not five. Uh, he said, um, "Oh yeah, don't forget your floaties next time or something." He said something like <laughs> that was like in that vein of like, "Are you gonna bring a noodle next time or like you know whatever the thing was, right?" And. <laughs> So this kid, this yeah, kid, dog. yeah, dog, you got bullied. I don't know. No, you. look, fine, a five-year-old fine. definitely bullied you. You got big dogged by a five-year-old. Fine, whatever, whatever. This little kid's like, this kid's like, <laughs> yeah. Don't forget your floaty next time. And as he goes, he, he lunged at you and you flinched. <laughs> no, no, that's not what happened. And so then, as he said that, he went to take a lick from his snow cone, and the snow cone was such an ice ball that it all just fully moved with his tongue off of the cup and fell on the ground. And I remember I just laughed at him because he was so shocked. He didn't know that could happen. Little man hadn't been around the block a couple times, didn't know how to eat a snow cone like an idiot. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, he's he's good with the liquid water, but what about the frozen water? A little pump. All right. I'm glad gravity told him what time it was, you know? And so anyway, he he licked the snow cone. It fell off. <laughs> such a fucking idiot. Me? What did I do? No, I'm just In laughing. this story, I didn't do anything. Just, no, no, but I love to because you talked about like swift comeuppance. But it took so long for him to get comeuppance. What do you mean so, so long? Really what do you mean so long? He said the thing and then he took a lick and then his afternoon was, was whole, ruined. Was the, that was the second thing though. He'd already he'd already bullied you earlier. But it's swift come up, it's when you do a thing and then a thing happens. <laughs> you're taking you're taking it know. as if it's the whole entirety of you're, the situation. I, you're you're also just acting like you won, which no, nah, you still got bullied by a five year old. No, nah, that kid was real when upset. He dropped his, <laughs> that kid's day was ruined. I didn't have to do anything of that kid. That kid <laughs> licked the snow coat. It fell off the cup, and he was. <laughs> oh. I, that's that's where the five year old kickback is. So he got like too big for his britches because he knew how to swim. But as soon as his snow coat splatted on the ground, he was a kid again, oh. and he was all upset. Oh, oh God! Excuse me. <clears throat> what? I, I was coughing. I just so you're saying the 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 snow cone put him in his place. Is what you're trying to say? One hundred percent. You did nothing. You did nothing and just watched. I didn't have to do as, anything. As your as your tormentor. What, what was I supposed to do? slight inconvenience. My tormentor. <laughs> <laughs> the slight inconvenience. Oh. Hey. This wasn't a neighborhood full of money. That was his only snow cone for the weekend. <laughs> All right, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. At least he got to, yeah, he got to feel like a big dog next to you. Nah, so nah. Even him out. I was chilling. <laughs> yeah, you sound real chill about it. I was chilling. I was. I was so happy. Oh. <sighs> Just splat it. He That's had he had funny. a bunch of blue all over his legs like an idiot. <laughs> he looks so stupid. <laughs> it got a it, so it got on his swim trucks. I, don't know, I just laughed at him. <laughs> it's also really hard for me to imagine the story just not as you now either. It's really hard. I'm not. I'm really not. I'm not really imagining a 14-year-old Josh. I'm just imagining you just like, ha, 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 in this kid's face. Hey, that kid, oh. that kid deserved that. I still, oh, man, that's so funny to me that he, like, got, and you could see on his face he got real upset. Like, he didn't even, <coughs> the bully was gone at that point. Like, you want to say he bullied me? Any sort of bully of nature just melted away, and then he was a kid who wanted to cry because his snow cone hit the ground. Oh man. Uh, I just I'm pretty sure it was the first lick too. That's what makes it even more hilarious. That's to me. embarrassing. The fact that, that yeah. it's like he was about to enjoy a snow cone mm. and then he went Bruh. That's the little kid equivalent of like losing your job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is yeah. that that first lick and then your thing falls, you're just kinda like, What do I do with my life now? Look, that you know? and that snow Did cone place so by short? the way. <laughs> that snow cone yeah. place burned down <laughs> i wish it burned down okay every, every 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 bully got taken to task this this snow cone place was so bad this is the worst snow cone place <coughs> like ever anybody anybody who went to school i don't know if our listeners like i don't know if listeners from my hometown like would listen to the show or anything but if you do if you went to peabody high school you probably passed the snow cone stand this little like cart every day to get to okay. school because it was just out there it would be out there the whole year and they would really only open up for the hot days and um and months so obviously it was open all summer <clears throat> it would open beginning in spring and then it would yeah. open if it was like let's say a heat wave was coming right like it was going to be a particularly right, yeah. warm day even if it was october but it was going to be hot for some reason that snow cone place yeah. would open 
So anyway, see, I like that. Other places don't do that. They're just closed for yeah. You know, they'll from like this date on this. This was I. I still don't know the person who worked this stand for real. Like I don't know if the owner was actually the person working it or if they just owned it and had friends, you know, pop in and work it because they were never like they were never really nasty. You know what I mean? So so you know how a place like that. Okay. Where you have to bring all these syrups and all of these like like um, different uh, like sugary things, they should be attracting fruit flies, especially if you're leaving it. And they never did. Sure. You, you'd never see like fruit flies or flies or any of that stuff in that smoke. So they kept it clean, but they had the worst ingredients that that you could ever imagine. The main ingredient is just ice. But I, I gave that place three chances. I gave that place three chances, right? So there was one yeah. time, there was one time though, I'm pretty sure they had dirty ice because my snow cone tastes off. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. It just was not, it was not good, you know? Mm-hmm. And so then I, I didn't go there for a while. I didn't ask for a snow cone for a while. And like, my mom knows my aunt even knows how much I love snow cones, you know? It's just one of those treats that's cheap and it's just sugar water, mm-hmm. but it's it's yeah. it's dazzling to look at and it's nice on a hot day. I'm just I'm just saying, right? <laughs> so this That's a nice little snow cone soliloquy you had there. <laughs> yeah. Snow cones will brighten your day. You it's, it's hard. I I'll even say this. Wow. I'll throw this out there. I have no yeah, yeah. data to back me up, but I'm almost positive. I'm almost positive that the weeks where the snow cone stand was open, there were less shootings. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Maybe I just couldn't hear the shots because I was enjoying my snow cone so much. Or maybe <laughs> other people in the neighborhood were enjoying snow cones and they were like, hey, yeah? this really isn't the day for foolishness. All right. Yeah. Can I just say that we've we've known each other for a long time? Yeah, yeah. And we've been doing this show for a while. And this is our hundred and eleventh episode. Yeah, yeah. And I think in the time we've done this, I've never seen you light up as much as you did just now talking about snow cones. Hey, you had a lightness in your face I have not seen. Dude, snow cones are since before we had career worries. Snow cones like, that are was something you. else, man. Snow cones are. Look at that fucking smile! Look at that smile! I, don't, I think I don't know if I've seen you smile like that in a while. Dude, so I'm just thinking of the beauty of snow cones. Because snow cones also aren't something. You really have to either go out and seek them directly or happen upon them. Even if yeah. even if my mom was out and she wanted to get me a treat, she couldn't bring me back a snow cone. It's not happening. That thing's going to be melted yeah, they don't, by the time she yeah, gets home. Yeah, they don't home, transport well. You know? And then, oddly enough, <clears throat> once it's melted, and, and even if you try to freeze it and then have it later, it's still not quite the same because it doesn't get that crushed ice effect. Now all the ice is Wait, one it, ice block. It, be, it becomes one block of ice, yeah. yeah. Then, it's, then it's a different thing. So snow cones yeah, are do, a do moment you, in time. So part of what you like about... So that's what I was going to say. What you like about them is that they're so temporary. Yeah. It's, just, it's a moment. And apparently a they temper down gang violence. Like... <laughs> <laughs> No one's like, oh, you got a red snow cone? I got a blue snow cone. Pop, pop, pop. <laughs> that never happens. You know? <laughs> or they'll be like, let's get to this in a couple seconds. Finish our snow cones first. Yeah. Um, so anyway. I didn't I've I've never known of your love of of, of snow cones. It really hasn't yeah, come up the last time you because had- they're not in Chicago <laughs> like that. <laughs> That's true. You don't have snow cones around as much. We have them around here in Iowa. We used to have our own snow cone maker. My, like it was just a little little plastic thing, but you put ice in it, and then you just crush it, and it would come out as like a crushed ice thing. And it came with a uh, crushed ice thing, excuse me. And then it came with a bunch of syrups and stuff too. So we like we were living that snow cone life for a little while. Wow. Wow. What I didn't know that about you. That's that's wild that you had you had a snow cone maker in your life and you didn't share it with me till now. Share it with you? Yeah. I mean, what? I don't I don't have it with me. No, I just I'm just saying you didn't share the story with me until now. But we've known each other for a long time. That's wild. 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's like if someone told friendship. me they used to have their own like go kart track, and they said it nonchalantly. <laughs> that's, I'm like, what? That's nowhere on the same level. Snow cone makers aren't like a lavish thing, because there was. I remember there was a trend in like the the late '90s, early 2000s, where there was a bunch of like home little snow cone yeah, I remember maker it. things. They were just ice chippers is all the way. Yeah. Hey, I know. But some of us couldn't afford those ice chippers, so we just watched that commercial <laughs> longingly. I watch. I'd watch because wow. you know it was white kids in in the, the homemade commercial. <laughs> just, yeah. I, I watch it and be like, oh no, damn, <laughs> another day without a snow cone. <laughs> But I think like like this area got into that trend a little bit. I don't know. We we like snow cones around here. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't know if it's an Iowa thing. Mm. I don't know, but but they they tend to be at most uh, the activities. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I love when I love when they sell snow cones like at during like a football game. Mm-hmm. So people are getting <clears throat> snow cones and it's like fucking forty five degrees. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I love that's them so Midwest much. Midwest stuff. I've definitely eaten a snow cone with gloves on before. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how much I love. It's them. interesting because there's some there are summer treat, but then you you'll see people who like make them out of snow. Like they'll like have like an actual like ice thing, yeah, and just kind of make it. But it's in the winter. It's it it's weird that that's the one like all season treat. Um, have we talked about for snow cones too long? I think we've maybe talked about snow cones. Yeah, I'll long. get to the second one. So the second time that that place did be dirty was I got a I for, I forgot we were talking about the place. The place that wasn't good, but it didn't have bugs, so that made it okay. Yeah, so (laughs) I went there specifically as a child. I'm, like, really young at this point still. And I'm like, hey, Mm -hmm. everybody deserves a second chance. Especially when they're trying to spread joy in the world like this place is. So let me give them another shot. Mm -hmm. And I remember I got something that was, like, called a blue tsunami. It had blue in the name. So obviously the mm. snow cone is going to be blue. It was so blue that my tongue <laughs> and my teeth were blue. I don't even think they put this is what I think happened. I think that these people made a mistake and didn't know what to do. So they had, you know, the blue food coloring that they'll mm-hmm. be part of the syrup. I think they just straight up put dye into the snow cone. Because my teeth, my tongue, everything in my mouth was blue for about two and a half days. It was so it was Jeez. it was so bad that my mom got genuinely she made me use like Listerine and the Listerine was coming out blue. Like <laughs> this purple coming out bluer. <laughs> no, no, this purple Listerine was coming out blue, right? Oh, the purple Listerine. So she was trying to get me to like maybe m- wash my mouth out or just something. And I remember right. I did it about three times, which to a kid is just death. Like when you're little, because you already hate the pain of mouthwash because mm. you don't get why yeah, it's necessary. Like, oh, I've, been, I've been doing this. I've been doing this all day. Yeah, it stripped the pain out of my mouth. It. <laughs> <laughs> it got the varnish right off of my tongue. <laughs> my taste buds got a got a bald fade. All right. <laughs> <laughs> my tongue couldn't feel anything. And so then, and the snow cone was also bad. Like, it didn't taste good. So I didn't finish it. Right. So that I was my mouth was that blue without me finishing it, which is crazy. Jeez. And and then I remember. If you had got to the syrup at the bottom, then. Yay. If I went to the syrup at the everything... bottom, I think I'd be in Blue Man Group. <laughs> Stupid. I think that's what happened to everybody in that group. They had that snow cone, <laughs> and they just kept going. <laughs> And before you know it, you can't talk. All you know I do is drum. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. It, it could happen. It could happen. Warn your kids. <laughs> Protect your children. It's blue out here. Don't, don't let your child become a blue man. <laughs> don't let your kid become a blue man. That's negligence. All right? <laughs> It's like a documentary, like a daytime show with parents of blue men. Yeah. <laughs> like, they just, they stopped talking to they us. They stopped talking to us. They just kept getting these snow cones. And before you knew it, I don't even know if he has feelings anymore. 
And he's just like banging tubes together and shit. And I, I don't, I don't know how to relate to him anymore. No one bought him the black sweater. He was just in it one day. Just had it. Keeps pointing at me like this. Just keeps doing. It. Uh, and so it was so blue oh. that I straight up, and this may be TMI for uh, our listeners who are used to a bit more of a timid show, but I piss blue. <laughs> I was, I was hoping it was going to be that you pissed. Did you actually piss blue? Dude, it was like, it wasn't like blue like <clears throat> Avatar, like how I'm sure that they piss, but it was like, <laughs> it was a hue. It was a hue of blue. <laughs> I like assuming that the <laughs> Navi from Avatar pissed blue. Why wouldn't they? Why would they? Wouldn't it be weirder if they didn't? Everything is blue. That's a normal color for them. Blue looks completely <laughs> regular to them. <laughs> right, but I'm just saying it's rare that. I would hope it's not a contrasting it. color. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the third time this place did yeah, me dirty. Anyway. <laughs> this, this is a Buck Wild Snow Cone episode. <laughs> The third time that this place did me dirty, they had started trying yeah. to sell popcorn chicken. Okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I, in my head, I'm, I'm like... <laughs> what if we try hot food? Yeah, what if we try hot food after we've uh, oh. poisoned all the kids with dye? <laughs> no one wants our cold anymore. Let's make hot. Yeah. That's the pivot for the business. I don't know how they stayed open because there was this one dude that did a lot of drugs that would always get a snow cone from them. And there was a there was a point in my very young life where I didn't fully understand what drugs were. <laughs> that man's addicted to snow cones. I, I genuinely I thought this man was addicted to snow cones because I would see him in other parts of the neighborhood acting wild. And he's like clearly on crack, right? <laughs> So dude clearly yeah. is like is like a full on crack addict. But he would be acting weird, but then I'd always see him seem so normal when he would go get his snow cone. Now what I didn't know oh. what I didn't know is clearly this man liked to enjoy a snow cone with his crack. Okay? That's what was happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I would yep. see him later and he'd be all wild, but he was normal before, but I didn't understand what drugs were. Yeah. You know? I mean, listen. They go together like America and apple pie. <laughs> snow cone, snow cone and crack. Both icy, you know? Both icy. <laughs> One just needs a little bit of heat, you know? <laughs> and so so then I was scared of snow cones for a little while, for maybe like six months. I didn't even tell anybody. But you know how you get those misconceptions when you're a kid? Scared of snow cones. I really did because I was like, I've been eating snow cones. I, I love know. snow cones. <laughs> So now, in my head, I'm like, is snow cones, like, I didn't know what crack was. But I was in my head, essentially, I was like, is snow cones crack? Like, am I going to be out here in the streets stealing from people <laughs> to get more snow cone? <laughs> like, you laughing, but I really thought this for a couple months. I was no, like, because no. <laughs> I would see that dude, and this is after the blue thing happened. And the blue thing was like my scared straight program because that was me being like, oh, OK, not all you can't trust every snow cone. You can't trust like you need to be careful where you get your snow cones from because not everybody is a reliable uh-huh. distributor, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I was in the car with my grandma and when we saw that guy and my grandma knew that guy. And my grandma uh-huh. was was telling me how smart that guy was when he was younger, when he was like in school and stuff, and how sad it was that he's like, you know, like an addict now, because that's all he does. <laughs> and you're like, now when oh, she I know, I've said seen him. that's all he does, he had a snow cone in his hand. He was yep. leaving the snow cone stand. Oh, gotcha. And so to me, I'm like, she didn't. She said that's all he does. She didn't say all and he you're does. Like, Why is are you crack. guys letting me? Why do you guys let me have these if that's what's going to happen to me? So then in my mind, I'm like, so is y'all just let me do this in moderation? Is that why sometimes y'all tell me no when I want a snow cone? Because <laughs> I remember one time when when my mom, one time when my mom was um, 
taking me to my grandma's house. I asked for a snow mm-hmm. cone. But you know how when you're little, you don't think of the logistics of things. So I had asked for the snow cone when we had already passed the place. So she would have had to make a loop around the block and turn around mm-hmm. just to get. And she was like, I'm not going to do all that. You should have asked me before, you know, whatever, right? So that was the mm-hmm. time I didn't get to have a snow cone. And there was another time where we were about to have dinner. But I'm not putting these times, these reasonings why I can't have snow cones together. All that's happening in my mm-hmm. brain is that my grandma is like, hey, that dude, that's all he does. And he used to be really smart yeah. and he was going somewhere. And it's so sad what happened to him that, you know, that's all he does now. Yeah. And I'm just seeing the snow cones. And in your mind, you're like, these snow cones are so blue, they make you insane. Yeah, clearly, if you have enough blue snow cone, three blue snow cones equal one crack rock, you know? (laughs) That's basic snow cone math right there. Yeah, because just, okay, before this whole thing got debunked, like before I found out what drugs were and everything... I did see <laughs> before it got to like someone came out to prove you wrong that it was indeed not snow cones, but a very strong drug that was affecting. <laughs> yeah. People. So before any of this got debunked, right? Got debunked. This guy, I was driving home with my grandma again, and this guy was dancing in the street, clearly high, right? Mm-hmm. And so I remember what my grandma said about him last time. And he wasn't that far from the snow cone stand. So in my right. head, I'm like, poor guy, just can't can't kick it. Because in my mind, I haven't had a snow cone now for a very long time. Because after that blue thing happened, yeah. my mom specifically said we were never going to go there again. And so yeah. in my mind, I've kicked the habit, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I wish he could quit cold turkey like me, you know? <laughs> and so the third time was because I was like, let me give them one more chance, and they had popcorn chicken. So we get the popcorn chicken, right? (laughs) And this is, is like, such a mistake. Listen, their snow cones are bad, and I think they ruin your life, but but they've got popcorn chicken now. No, this is after I realized that snow cones weren't drugs. Oh, that's right. That's right. After it was debunked, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So you realized it was safe to go back. Yeah. When I realized that, okay. oh, this okay. man is on drugs. <laughs> yeah. This has nothing to do. He just likes the taste of blue tsunami in his mouth while he's on drugs. Yeah. In yeah. fact, drugs probably are probably the, the only thing tsunami. that makes the blue tsunami good. <laughs> yeah. He's tasting it in a way I'm not and can, and can never. Yeah. He doesn't even taste right. the same colors I do, you know? He tastes an extra color. That's why they that's why they gave him all the extra blue. Yeah. He's tasting green. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, and so basically we get the snow cone, we get the popcorn chicken, and I was like, let me just go with something super, super regular. I'm just gonna get a banana flavor, because at least if my uh tongue uh, turns like yellow. That's less noticeable. Whatever. Like I'm, I'm planning ahead in my head, and then we get the popcorn it's chicken. Noticeable, but possibly more medically alarming. Yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're, if you have a tongue that won't, won't go back from yellow for a while, that's probably not good. Yeah, yeah. And you get a fever. You did. All right. <laughs> Man, you got tongue jaundice. How'd you manage that? And so we get the popcorn chicken, and. I think it was my aunt and I but anyway we we take a couple of bites and we have, we've been fully hoodwinked we've been like I don't even know how you do this I really don't know it's almost a talent the level at which they tricked us there is okay. so little chicken in here there's there's almost no chicken so they gave us just mm. a bunch of balls of breading just a bunch oh, of fried breading. balls gotcha. that are breaded Mm -hmm. And so we bite into it, and already it's like the breading's not good, so the whole thing's not good. And then the little one I bit into, I was like, where's the chicken? Like, this is crazy. And after I bite into a couple more, I'm like, oh, there's no chicken in here. (laughs) (laughs) And instead of banana, they gave me lime. (laughs) So I'm, I'm leaving fully upset. Yeah. Yeah, this this place doesn't uh, doesn't doesn't sound reputable. Yeah, no, it wasn't good. It was Not a lot of quality control. It. 
I don't even know if it had a name. We would just call it the Snow Cone Place. <laughs> I was I was about to make up a name for it because I was like, I don't think he said a name. No, no, I don't think it had a name. This sounds like a <laughs> this was some sort of shady government experiment. You didn't realize? Yeah, yeah, that actually they were testing the effect. Yeah, that would make more sense than it staying open all those years. <laughs> yeah. You know, the government, the CIA, just opens a, a snow cone stand to the hood. And they try out new blue yeah. on black people. <laughs> yeah, they try that out. And they, they cover it up <laughs> by funneling more drugs into it. We got to cover up the snow cone stuff with crack. Otherwise, yeah. the snow cone thing looks really weird. We also have to cover up the snow cone thing with bad popcorn chicken. <laughs> yeah, this was, this is one, one experiment that just kept getting out of hand. Yeah. Uh, we need something else then to cover it up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe the government is not good at stuff. Maybe they aren't. I think that's what we've learned here. Mm-hmm. I think that's the main moral. Yeah, of- yeah. So, because I, I was I was initially just trying to talk about the comeuppance thing, but then it reminded me about the snow cone place. I know that you got... Pa- I, but I love seeing the snow cone passion, so don't you dare apologize for that. All right. <clears throat> that was worthwhile. I felt like not only was it a, a, a good, good fodder for the episode, mm-hmm. I feel, frankly, closer to you as a friend. Got you, got you. I feel you. Okay. I'm, and you I'm know, glad. I know sometimes you. I know sometimes you'll ask me like, you know, oh, if you have a story about a certain topic. But there are episodes where I just, I gotta just hold on. <laughs> I gotta just grab on and we go and we just keep on trucking. Because there were points where my I would just break and start laughing there because I'm like, we were talking about <laughs> trains or something, <laughs> and now here we are, <laughs> twenty minutes deep on snow cones. Yeah, yeah. It's fun. It's an adventure for me. Mm-hmm. Um, we got anything else? Mm, yeah. I suppose I could talk about my flights too that I had. <laughs> um, I I thought about that as I was coming home, where I was like, "Yeah, let me not." There were there were things happening on my flight, but I was like, "Let me not become this dude that's just like has a podcast about his flights." Because after a while, yeah, that's gonna true. that's gonna really like wear people down. Like I specifically told you about the majesty of flight because that was so insane, but I don't want right, to become yeah. the guy who's like. And then there was a baby, you know. Like I, right. I want to be understanding of of, of uh, people's situations and everything. Although I will say one thing that did happen very quick is that you know the mm-hmm. roller cart with all the snacks and the drinks on it. Uh, yeah. Guy in the aisle seat. That thing fully ran over his foot, and it woke him up. And that was that was insane <laughs> to see. Yeah, because he was waking up with so much pain that he yelped, and so everybody turned around like, Damn. "Is it? Is this it? Is this a, we've had a lot of good flights for the past couple is decades? It, is this is this is this a terrorism? Yeah." And then, sure enough, the flight attendant was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. Are you all right?" And he was like, he's also awake now, so he's just looking around. So it still, it probably felt like continuing a nightmare. Because if my man was even having a oh, yeah. less than great dream, and then he gets awoken by his foot being crushed. Right, yeah. Because what he did, this is like, this is not a flight attendant's fault at all, but what he did was there was no one in uh, the middle seat, and so he had really, like, splayed himself out with one foot going backwards and the other foot going forward and him, like, laying, like, sideways in the seat. Oh, uh, well, see, then his, then his foot's, like, just full yeah, on Yeah, his aisle. foot's that's, full you know, on That's the, the risk aisle. you take. And that's so the risk you take getting comfy. She runs over it, and she I'm sure she only got the toes, but still. Right, yeah. But still, yeah. this dude wakes up, and he's waking up to everyone staring at him. But we're staring at him because he screams. Yes. But if you had a dream that you were like in the Matrix or something, this would not feel like you've woken up. He he may also not realize he screamed, and so everyone's looking. Yeah, at him and he didn't realize he. Anytime I sleep on a plane, when I drift off a little bit because I don't sleep well on planes, mm-hmm. but anytime I do and I feel myself come up, I look around quick. See if anyone's looking at me because I know I have a tendency to go like, <laughs> like when I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when I wake up, I'm so scared those would tend to of screaming myself awake. Really, it's like one of my number one fear. It's sometimes why I try not to sleep on a plane. Because I'm like, why are you? Does that happen to you? Do you do you scream yourself awake sometimes? I have, yeah. 
Really? Yeah. If I'm having a bad huh. enough dream and I feel trapped or something, or if you have like the sleep paralysis dream where you feel like you can't move and then you yeah. or you get so wrapped up in the story of the dream that something bad enough happens that you scream, I'll scream in real sure. life. And then I'm like, really? yeah, yeah, it's bad. I'm surprised I I've never, never done it when either. we've when we've uh, I know been in the hotel room. Well, that's what you, yeah, that's what I was thinking of because also anytime we've been in the hotel room and like you usually like go out and you're out. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So that's why I'm kind of surprised that you scream yourself awake sometimes. It doesn't happen often, but it has happened enough yeah. that I think about it happening with like a genuine fear. Like I remember oh, one time, especially think in a flight. Like yeah, that, I, I remember one time like I was that, restless. You, you just be, and I was yeah. like, "Man, I I really want to go to sleep right now, but my body's so tense. I feel like I'll scream myself awake. <laughs> I yeah, could feel yeah. it. I could it, in that moment. I could feel it. Like if I drift off to sleep right now, I'm gonna have a stress dream, and I'm gonna scream myself awake. I just knew yeah. it. No, definitely. Yeah. I, I can only sleep like sleep on a plane if I'm on like the uh, you know the window seat. I can't if I'm in the middle, I'm gonna be awake. I don't like being between people. And I get too conscious about like yeah. making sure I'm not like you know, spreading my legs too far or, have, or take hogging the armrests. Because I know I'm like I'm a, I, you know, I'm not I know I'm not like a huge guy, but like I'm kind of a broader shouldered guy, so I wanna make sure I'm not like I don't wanna be one of those guys people complain about that have their just like legs fully open and you know, just like meh, taking it over. I even had a flight the, coming down to Phoenix. There was a guy in the middle, and he 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 fell asleep immediately, just and like head down asleep, and then had his legs fully spread apart, so he had his leg against mine. But he was bouncing his leg while he was sleeping, so he was just rubbing his knee against mine, and it it was <laughs> it was it was not comfortable. And I kind of gave him some like little nudges back. Uh, I didn't didn't register. He was too comfortable, mm-hmm. and I was very uncomfortable because I was also the one I had been sprinting around the airport for because I went to the wrong gate twice, and I'm a fucking fool. And then my backpack exploded while I was running. Just everything fell out, and a tall German man just stood over me and was just like, "I think your backpack was open." And I was like, "Yeah." And he just sat there drinking his soda, watching me. And I, there was a lady who helped me pick up. I was just like, what, what's your plan here? Why are you here? I feel like I would do that. I would get to an airport early just to watch people, you know? You're just watching me. Get to well, the, the, the joke I made, I talked about it on stage, and I said it's a little, uh, little on the nose to have a German engaging in schadenfreude. But yeah. no one really got the joke because no one knew the word schadenfreude. <laughs> I thought it was clever, but... Yeah, if you know what schadenfreude is, it's... Uh... If you know what it means, it's a... Yeah. So right there, it's a little softball joke. Yeah. But. <laughs> uh, should we open up the mailbag? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, I'm excited for this one because, you know, we did a, a, a mailbag episode last episode. Um, and we actually got an update on one of them that we actually asked for an update on. The the date with the <laughs> the foot fetishist. Okay, let's go off. From, from Anna. <laughs> Uh, this email is called Number 99 Strange Dates Full Disclosure. So we're getting the full story here. So this is uh, from Anna. Hey, guys. After you read my email, I was so happy you had a great time laughing since uh, you guys are working hard on entertaining us listeners. Oh, well, thank you. We don't get that sentiment a lot. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, also, I realized that my mail was not only not including my reactions, it was also not complete. Here comes the full disclosure of what took place at the date with the gentleman. <laughs> That's very That's very, very kind. Nice phrasing. Wow. It's very kind. Uh, it was pre-pandemic, and I apologized for the long email. Uh, I have had my fair share of strange dates and miserable relationships, and it has made me a bit picky when it comes to dates and relationships. So when this gentleman asked me out, I asked my coworkers about his character, since he is in the periphery of my line of work, and we met a couple of times due to work. I love their wording. Yeah. So much here. They're in the periphery of my line of work. Yeah, that's just a that's a really nice way of saying I don't fucking know this guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, they vouched for him, so I agreed to a date. Uh, we met up outside the restaurant on a Friday after work. I had taken the time to freshen up, change to a new blouse, uh, to my tight black office skirt, and open toe heels. Uh, I was looking forward to a nice time and some good food. As we were seated at the, at the table, I noticed that the restaurant was full 
And at the table next to us was a family of three, a mom, dad, and a son around the age of 10. We ordered wine, and the conversation revolved around the usual topics, work, family, and so on. It was about 40 minutes into the date that he brought up his fascination for feet. Mind you, he was... <laughs> sorry, sorry. I made myself get... Mind you, he wasn't low-key. <laughs> Just be like, oh, I love feet. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Can't get enough of them. That's so funny. <laughs> he talked about the shape, size, touch, look, and the smell of feet in a way that was was borderline to describing an ice cream. <laughs> Feet were his kinks. I wasn't shocked, but more surprised that he brought it up less than an hour into the first date. The situation felt awkward and strange, and I laughed out loud thinking this was this was a joke and that my coworkers set, uh, were sat somewhere in the restaurant and were about to jump out and yell pranked. You know, uh, I looked around and noticed the big eyes of the dad next to us <laughs> and turned my head just in time to see the gentleman sliding off his stool. <laughs> Sliding off his stool. Oh, no, I lost my place. Sliding off his stool, trying to be discreet. <laughs> he grabs my feet, pulls off my open toe heels, takes a good look at my manicured toenails, licks his lips, and sniffs my shoe. <laughs> it's the licking the lips. is. <laughs> what happened next seemed to happen in slow motion to me, but only took seconds. As the gentleman sniffed my shoe... I registered something flying through the air and I looked up from the gross image of the gentleman sniffing my shoe and saw the open mouth of the of the dad coughing food onto my new blouse that slowly slid down my chest. Oh. What? The mom made a face of <laughs> The mom made a face of disgust as we all heard the gentleman <laughs> <laughs> What? Hang on. The mom made a face of disgust as we all heard the gentleman exhale a moan of ah, so good. (laughs) 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 Oh, I threw up in my mouth. Here I am disgusted humiliated and totally focused to not vomit deep down i'm actually starting to get angry the total disrespect of not asking permission to take my shoe off and sniff it nevertheless in public the disrespect to the other guests at the restaurant too who had to witness the whole thing my thoughts swirled around he is totally crazy and how to get out of the situation with some dignity left and the irritation of my ruined new blouse oh <sighs> Oh, there's more. Hang on. While the gentleman had ranted about the delight of feet earlier, he forgot two important things he should have asked me. One, whether or not I was ticklish on my feet. And second, what do what I do in my spare time. You see, I'm very ticklish, and I've been practicing Wing Chun, Kung Fu, for years. As he sniffed my shoe, he loosened the grip around my foot, and his hand softly slid from the my heel towards the arch of my foot and tickled it. As a reflex to get him off me, I pulled my feet back and in an upward motion, kicked him in the forehead with a whack. God. You left out a lot of stuff in this story from the first time you sent it to us, Anna. The gentleman's upper body flew upwards towards the table and he hit the top of his head on the table. I realized that there is no way I can end the date with dignity and that made me even more upset. (laughs) The disappointment was quite overwhelming And I had just kicked my date in the forehead and the feet were already leaving a red mark, just like an open hand slap as a cheek would on a cheek. Uh, So the thing, the thing that I'm stuck on is that (laughs) because you've been doing Wing Chun, if you want to get out of here with dignity, you just got to fight everybody in the restaurant. Just start whooping ass. You have have to kick every person's ass. In that restaurant. Yeah. 
Wow. As I pull my shoe out of his hand, the server appears out of nowhere with the starters. <laughs> and, <laughs> and asks if everything was all right. <laughs> As I met the server's eyes, I knew I was saved. I put on my shoe, glancing at the gentleman, rubbing his forehead, all confused, leaning one hand on the floor. The server said, I guess you don't want any starters. Don't worry about the wine glasses. Just go now. Uh, the glasses had fallen and were broken after the table. It was headbutted. <laughs> so she kicked this man's head into the table, which knocked over glasses and they broke. Yeah. Uh, the dripping, a uh, wine was dripping from the edge of the table onto my skirt and onto the shoulders of the gentleman. Your outfit got ruined. Yeah. No, your outfit got ruined. This man took your shoes off too. I'm sorry. This this was this you your your clothes were you've disrespected on this date. A and lot. I, you've been through a lot. This is a lot. Uh, I grabbed my purse, pulled out one of my business cards, and handed it over to the server. Thanked him, and if he wanted to meet for a drink or coffee, he just had to call me. Buck wild twist. <laughs> That's a turn I was not expecting. We've been married in that moment for be a like, year. You know? <laughs> As I walked off, I heard the gentleman scream, ouch, my hand, get off my hand. <laughs> so I guess the server stepped on his hand. <laughs> and and Anna, Anna, get off my hand. Oh, you stepped on his hand. Uh, no, there were no more dates with the gentleman or going back to the same restaurant. I have met him a few times due to work. But that is a whole different story. But I did go on dates with the server. So you were just keen to tell us a quarter of Wild. the story. Again, we need another update now. Yeah. Because now you dated the guy who was at the foot fetish date. I do feel like we're just. You guys had, you had to have talked about that. Yeah, we're just going to end up doing a podcast off of Anna's updates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we found our third co-host. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love a series in the in the mailbag to have an ongoing story. Uh, but I'm so happy I found your show on Spotify. I have binged it since I found it in July this year. Uh, in most episodes, there is a story that I can relate to or is actually similar to an experience of my own. Well, <laughs> neither of us come close on this one. Uh, thank you for being you, and I wish you all the best in all you do. Uh, maybe a theme about going to the doctor or dentist. Just offering up another phrase as if you're not your story isn't the only thing I'll ever think about again. Yeah. Take care and stay cool. Love, Anna. Anna, thank you. Anna, and thank you so much. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Thank you all, really. Thank you so much for listening to the Josh Johnson Show. We had a great time recording. I wow. hope you had a great time listening. If you are looking to catch wow. up with us on any of the socials, you can find me at Josh Johnson wow. Comedy. On Instagram, Josh Johnson. On Twitter, Josh J Comedy on Facebook. And Josh Johnson Comedy on TikTok and YouTube. We're, we're going to be posting clips of the show. If you're looking for Logan. Wow, you can follow me on Instagram at Logan M. Nielsen. And if you want to get into our mailbag and just challenge our lives, <laughs> you can email yeah, us. Yeah, really Josh change Johnson's our week. Show. Really, just change. Yeah, this this has this whatever I w week I was gonna have is gone now, and it's this week mm -hmm. now. Whatever this has created, um, you can send those to Josh Johnson Show at gmail dot com. Uh, and if you're, you can also leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. We like to read those there too. Um, and you can find bonus content Patreon dot com slash Josh Johnson Show. We got some bonus podcast stuff. We got deleted clips, lost episodes, <laughs> bonus videos, access to live shows. Uh, and speaking of live shows, we have one coming up. What is it? It's Sunday, September twenty sixth at six p.m. Eastern time. Did I get all that right off the top of my head? Let me see. I want to check. Pretty sure I nailed it with that. Um, I'm pretty sure I nailed it's it. It's the 25th if it's Sunday. Ah, yeah. Fuck. But you were close. Damn it. Sunday. No, I'm a failure. September 25th. I ruined it. At 6 p.m. There'll be tickets in the uh, episode bio. And uh, they're really fun. The last several we've had have, uh, I think it's the last great. time we talked about the Brave Little Toaster for a while. <laughs> Watched some videos. So. <laughs> We're never sure what we're going to do when they happen, so mm -hmm. uh, you should join us. You all have a great rest of the day, great weekend, and we'll talk to you soon. Go get you a snow cone. <laughs> <laughs>